Okay, so I'm standing here at the EVTM Symposium in St. Petersburg, Russia with um, Dr. Munasinghe from Sri Lanka. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Munasinghe, um, in, in America, for example, at level one trauma centers, uh, they use a lot of Reboa. They're very used to a lot of trauma. Uh, for example, where, where I work in, in um, Sweden, in Örebro, we, we have much less trauma and therefore, for example, we use uh, endovascular means like Reboa maybe much more because we, we don't have the same knowledge of trauma care. Uh, what do you believe is the, the role of, of endovascular procedures such as Reboa um, for trauma care in, in Sri Lanka? Yeah. We had a lot of trauma cases some time ago, but uh, during the last 10 years we didn't have any major trauma cases other than the road traffic accident. But now again it's emerging. I think there's a big place in Sri Lanka for Reboa. We don't have Reboa at the moment. That is why we came here. We read a lot of things about Reboa and we thought it's going to be a good play, good uh, mode of intervention in our trauma patient. That's why we decided to come here to see what's happening and how we can apply that in Sri Lanka, how feasible that is in Sri Lanka. And what do you think, what have you learned so far from, from being here? How, how do you believe it can be uh, maybe implemented in Sri Lanka? Yes, there is a group of patients. You consider them, they can't do anything and they were uh, cornered or actually they were left be behind because of the severe bleeding and, and when they come to the hospital, they already have gone and we had nothing else to do. But that group, I think this is the best solution to start Reboa and temporarily occlude the bleeding and let the surgeon handle after that. So you think it's mainly uh, to be used as an in-hospital procedure. Do you think maybe pre-hospital it also has a role to play? Yeah, I'm a military man, so we believe pre-hospital care very much. And we have planned I don't know how successful is that. We want to form a team of Reboa, the mobile team of Reboa, as and when it is required, we are planning to move yeah. and start job. And who do you believe should be performing Reboa in Sri Lanka? Should it be uh, trauma surgeons, uh, military personnel? No, it's actually a team effect. In Sri Lanka, we are the first respondent in any trauma, whether it's a natural disaster or man-made disaster. So we have a military team, we have surgeons, uh, anesthetists, interventional radiologists, intensivists. That team should take over this job and do the job. I, I totally agree with you. It's um, a multidisciplinary, it's a multidisciplinary uh, approach. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you have the, the uh, Sri Lankan Surgical Congress uh, coming up this autumn. Um, could you please tell us a little bit about this event? Yeah, Sri Lanka, as it has not exposed to Sri Lanka, I think it's the best opportunity for Sri Lankan doctors and Sri Lankan people to aware about that and the authorities to aware of this and they should promote this. And the Sri Lankan surgeons, intensivists and the emergency care physicians, they should be have some idea, the basic idea what Triboa is and they should have interest to learn this. I am definite that they will come and learn this and it's going to be a good place. And uh, you were telling us that the reason why you came here to St. Petersburg in Russia uh, was to learn more about Reboa to, to implement it in Sri Lanka. What, what do you think about the, the symposium so far? It's very good, it's very well organized and so far the exposure we had, yes there are positive things we can get and we can carry forward those things Sri Lanka. Okay, so thank you very much for participating in this interview. And uh, this was uh, from uh, Dr. Monasinghe here at the EVTM Symposium in St. Petersburg, Russia.